Okay, so I'm doing my presentation on general senses. Um, general senses are also known as the somatosensory, somesthetic, or somatic senses. Uh, the receptors for the general sensors, uh, senses are relatively simple in structure and physiology. Um, they're distributed over the entire body. The senses include touch, pressure, stretch, movement, heat, cold, and pain. Signals reach the brain by... Um, well, from the body, ascending sensory tracts of the spinal cord, and from the head, the cranial nerve, especially the trigeminal nerve. So here's just um, a quick table for the receptors of the general senses. So here you can see it's broken down into unencapsulated endings and encapsulated nerve endings. So for unencapsulated endings, we have the free nerve endings, the tactile discs, and the hair receptors, and for the encapsulated nerve endings, uh, we have the tactile corpuscles, the um, end bulbs, the bulbous corpuscles, the lamellar corpuscles, and uh, the muscle spindles and tendon organs. So now I'm just going to get into a little bit more detail about all of those. Uh, we have the unencapsulated nerve endings, as I mentioned before. Um, so these ones are uh, sensory dendrites that are not wrapped in connective tissue. So we'll start with the free nerve endings, um, and they include warm receptors, cold receptors, nociceptors, which are, um, if you'll remember, they are the receptors for uh, pain. Um, and then, so the free nerve endings are bare dendrites. They're um, bare dendrites with no specific accessory cells or tissues, um, and they're most abundant in the skin and mucous membranes. Uh, the next receptor that I'm going to talk about are the tactile Merkel discs, which are tonic receptors for light touch. Uh, so they sense textures, edges, and shapes. They are flattened nerve endings, you can see here, that terminate adjacent to tactile Merkel discs. Um, and then we have the hair, recep hair receptors. Uh, and these monitor the movements of hairs. They are phasic receptors. They consist of a few dendrites entwined around the base of a hair follicle. You can see down here. They uh, respond to any light touch that bends the hair. And because they adapt very quickly, uh, we are not constantly annoyed by our clothing or the bending of body hairs. Okay, and so now we're going to go on to the encapsulated nerve endings. Um, and the encapsulated nerve endings are nerve fibers that are wrapped in glial cells or connective tissue. Um, and what the connective tissue does is it enhances the sensitivity of the nerve fiber or uh, makes it more selective with respect to which modality it responds to. Okay, so the tactile uh, corpuscles are phasic receptors for light touch and texture. So um, as far as shape, they're tall, ovoid, or pear-shaped, and they consist of two to three nerve fibers mean, uh, meandering up through the flattened Schwann cells. Um, they occur in the dermal papillae of the skin, these kind of um, grooves here. And um, they're especially concentrated in sensitive hairless areas like the fingertips, palms, eyelids, lips, nipples, and parts of the genitalia. Next we have our end bulbs, which are um, ovoid bodies with a connective tissue sheath around a sensory nerve fiber. Um, and they occur in the mucous membranes of the lips, tongue, and the conjunctiva on the anterior surface of the eye and the epineurium of large nerves. Next, we have our uh, lamellar corpuscles, which are phasic receptors for deep pressure, stretch, tickle, and vibration. Um, they're relatively large in length. They're one to two millimeters long um, with a single accessory dendrite. Innermost uh, capsule layers are flattened Schwann cells. The bulk of the capsule are concentric layers of fibroblasts with narrow fluid-filled spaces. And they occur in the peri uh, 
periosteum of the bone in joint capsules in the pancreas and some other viscera and deep in the dermis, especially on the hands, feet, breast, and genitalia. Um, so the bulbous corpuscles are tonic receptors for heavy touch, pressure, stretching of the skin, and joint movements. They're flattened, um, elongated capsules containing a few nerve fibers located in the dermis, subcutaneous tissue, and uh, joint capsules. Um, and the other nerve fibers for uh, general senses are the muscle spindles, um, which are uh, skeletal muscles near tendons, and they're involved in proprioception and stretch. Uh, the tendon organs are uh, have a similar function. Okay, and so for the somato somatosensory projection pathways, there are two main pathways. Um, one are signals that travel from the head to the cerebral cortex and ones that travel from below the head, like from your limbs, um, to the head via the spinal cord. So first I'm going to talk about the signals that travel from the head. Okay, so um, the cranial nerves, is, uh, as I mentioned before, especially the trigeminal nerve, uh, carry the signal to the pons and medulla oblongata, um, and they synapse with second-order neurons that desiccate and lead to contralateral thalamus. Um, and then the third-order neurons complete the route to the cerebrium. Uh, the only exception to this path is the second-order neurons that carry the proprioceptive signals from the head to the cerebellum. Um, and so the signals from below the head, uh, you have the first-order neurons down here that uh, enter the posterior horn of the spinal cord. The second nerve fibers are the ascending tracts, uh, usually the spinothalamic uh, tract. And those travel all the way up to the third order neurons, um, which conduct the signal to the uh, cerebral cortex. So uh, the area of the cerebrum that processes this information is the postcentral gyrus. Um, so it receives the signal from the thalamus. Um, and so here's just the where the postcentral gyrus is located. And if you remember, part of the postcentral gyrus is the somatosensory association area, which is where you make cognitive sense of the stimulation to the primary somatosensory cortex. So um, the primary somatosensory cortex is where you become aware of the stimulation. Um, and here is kind of an upside down sensory map of the contralateral side of the body showing uh, it's diagrammed as a sensory hom homoculus, um, which basically it shows the amount of cerebral tissue that is devoted to a body region as a proportion to how richly innervated or sensitive the region is. Um, and it employs uh, somatotopy, which is a point-for-point -point correspondence between an area of the body and an area of the central nervous system. Okay, so um, part of the general senses is pain. Uh, there are two types of nociceptors. Uh, the first is the fast pain which are myelinated fibers, 12 to 30 um, milliseconds or meters per second. They are sharp, localized, uh, stabbing pain. Uh, the second type of uh, pain receptor um, is the unmyelinated fiber. Uh, it's they travel a half meter to two meters per second, and uh, the pain that you feel from these receptors is more of a dull, long-lasting, diffuse pain. Uh, somatic pain is pain felt in the skin, muscles, and joints. Visceral pain results from uh, stretching, like overstretching of the muscles, chemical irritants, like in the stomach or ischema, and they're often accompan accompanied by nausea. Uh, Brady Kinnon is the most potent pain stimulus known. Um, this this chemical actually activates reactions that promote healing. 
So there are two projection pathways for pain, and you can kind of guess that one is from, from the head and one is from below the head. So from the head, basically, the trigeminal uh, nerve, the facial nerve, or the glossopharyngeal or vagus nerves kind of pick up the, um, the stimulus, and these fibers enter the pons and descend to synapses in the medulla. The second order neurons arise in the medulla and ascend to the thalamus. Um, the third or order neurons are the neurons that carry that signal from the thalamus to the cerebral cortex to be processed. Um, so from below the head, you have the spinothalamic tract and the spinoreticular tract. So the spinothalamic tract is the most significant pain pathway, and it makes us conscious of pain. Uh, the spinoreticular tract sig um, signals are relayed to the hypothalamus and limbic system. Um, and what this does here is it activates the visceral, emotional, and behavioral reactions such as nausea, fear, and some reflexes. Um, and the last tract is the Griseal fasciculus, which carries signals to the thalamus uh, for visceral pain. Um, and then we get into kind of a referred pain, which results from the convergence of neural pathways in the central nervous system. It helps explain uh, the referred pain theory explains why visceral pain is felt in certain areas of the skin. So it's kind of easy to see why uh, the knowledge of the origins of referred pain is essential to the skillful diagnosis of organ dysfunctions by this image here. Um, so the central nervous system has ways of modulating pain. Uh, the two main ways are uh, the endogenous opioids and spinal gating. Okay, so the endogenous opioids are neuromodulators that provide um, analgesic or pain relieving mechanisms um, effects. So they're neuromodulators in that they um, can block transmission of pain signals and produce feelings of pleasure and euphoria. So you have your encaphalins, which are analgesic oglyopeptides with 200 times the potency of morphine. Um, neuropeptides are your endorphins and your dynorphins. And um, these are all secreted by the central nervous system, the pituitary gland, the digestive tract, and other organs in states of stress or exercise. So the next method of pain modulation is sp called spinal gating. And um, what this does is it blocks pain signals at the posterior horn. Um, it uses the descending analgesic fibers that rise in the brain stem and travel down the reticulospinar tract and block pain signals from traveling back up the cord. Uh, the spinal interneurons that secrete and cephalins also receive input from mechanoreceptors in the skin and deeper tissues. Uh, so basically, that explains why, like when you bump your knee, if you rub it, it helps to dull the pain sensation. So I'm just going to kind of go through these steps real quick of spinal gating. Okay, so in the first step, the nociceptor releases substance P into the interneuron. Then, uh, the second order neuron transmits the signal up the spinothalamic tract to the thalamus. Uh, the third order neuron relays the signal to the somesthetic cortex. Uh, input from the hypothalamus and the cerebral cortex converges on the central gray matter of the midbrain here. Uh, the midbrain then rela relays the signal to the reticular formation of the medulla oblongata. And then some of the descending analgesic fibers from the medulla secrete serotonin into the inhibitory spinal interneurons, shown here. Uh, the spinal neurons secrete encephalins, blocking pain transmission by means of postsynaptic inhibition of second-order pain neurons. Um, and then the other descending analgesic fibers synapse on first-order pain fibers, blocking pain transmission by means of presynaptic 
inhibition. So here you can see that whole cycle. All right, and that is it for my presentation on general senses. I hope you got some good information out of it.